Hey, well, welcome to our October uh, meeting. I know it's not uh, Halloween yet, but we thought we'd start you out with some treats. So uh, Hector's got a couple of articles in there. We'll let him go through these, and then we'll cover a couple of other topics tonight. So these two articles that you see here are from my uh, author mentoring group from BNI. These were provided by Dr. Ivan Meisner. <clears throat> and um, every time we meet, we always talk about how to write, how to do better articles, especially article writing, which is really blog writing. Yeah. Today, it's blog. So the first one to talk about is how to get 10 ideas, 10 articles from one idea. This is a very good article. I mean, when you read the items that are in here, you just go item by item, and you can actually take one idea and split it off into 10 different things. Again, well, I'm not going to read the thing because you can read the article for yourself, but it's a very good way of doing this. And one of the things that he's been very good at teaching me is how to take one thing and use it over and over and over again. So even if you've got articles that you have written in the past, you can go back to those same articles and dissect them and use this tool to make other articles. Yeah, in fact, if you uh, took a look at our blog today and our radio show, which was on cybersecurity, uh, two months ago, we did another episode blog on cybersecurity. We just covered different facets of the same beastie. So, you know, it's, it's just a matter of evolving it over time. And in a couple of months, you'll see another episode on cybersecurity because, you know, we've got to keep up with it because it's just the uh, cybercrime is so pervasive and most people are so ill-prepared to defend their computers and, again, and their cell phones. And again, if you have a blog, a website, yeah. you know, any of these social media sites, the, the criminals are using these things extensively to get information on. Oh, yes. I so, that. so one of the things we talked about today was, you know, any extra extraneous information that you really don't need to have on there, get it off. I mean, you don't have to have your wife, your husband, your kids' names, your grandparents' names. Don't post stuff about that unless you have a very secure, your buddies only, you know, your, it's only your seven real buddies. <laughs> So how do yeah. we make the, what would be your recommendation when you're talking about the business account versus a personal account? Because on Facebook you do find all that personal information, but I, I allow none of that on, on my business account. But even on your personal account, you, you're in charge of what you put out there. Like I said, I you don't, because a lot of people, they, they put way too much information oh, out boy, there. Do they ever. And then that comes when back to the When they're going on vacation. Well, not only that, house. if you post something on Facebook, and somebody else can see it, they can pass that on to somebody else and tell you to know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, in fact, one of the things... So whether it's your personal account or your business account, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, in fact, one of, one of the things that I mentioned in the blog was there was a, a company that hired a, a, a very expensive high-end security consultant because they, they, were, they had assumed that they were being bugged and they wanted to play sweat or they figured, you know, we've got one bad apple that's in the employ of, you know, our competitor. We're going to have to go and, you know, do these really draconian interrogations to find out who's giving away all of our trade secrets. But before the expert did that, she said, well, I'll tell you what, just give me a couple of days because we want to get a sense for what your people are doing. And then I'll let you know what we recommend for the next step. So she came back like two days later and she says, well, we've determined what your problem is. And they go, what is it? They go, Foursquare. And they go, what? They go, yeah, every time your people go out for an appointment, they will log in at Foursquare and they tell people where they're going, who's there, and what they talked about. They said, you're not being bugged. All they have to do is follow you online. You're putting the information out freely. So they had to go retrain all the employees on what they could and couldn't put on Foursquare. Yeah, a lot of people don't really understand also that a lot of times when, when people crack your stuff, it's unless you have a home office or something like that, but even there, if you have somebody comes clean your place, people leave their, their passwords all, all over the place, place and stuff yeah. like that. And if they can get one, most people are lazy that they Let's only the use one, one or yeah. two. <laughs> so if they got one, they have access to your other stuff. Yeah. We talked about the problem with cell phones and all those kinds of things, and we'll get more into that there. But this, the first article, is a great way to take one idea and make ten. So. What I'd like you to see this, this week is go find one of your blogs that you've done that actually did very well and try and take this and see if you can make 10 different ideas from it. Yeah. And, and another thing you can do too, and I'm going to do this again this week, is you can easily turn these ideas into vlogs, you know, a little video blog. 
And what I do to shoot the video vlog is I use that little critter right over there, the laptop, because it's got the camera in it, it's very stable. And I think I sent, I sent you the sample, did you see my mm -hmm. sample vlog? I mean, there, you don't have to do anything really elaborate. I mean, I really just got it in front of the thing and I winged it, but the beauty of having a computer too is you can actually write what you want to say around the screen. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You can take, take that vlog yeah. and you can make it into a podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because now you just remove the video and you get the yeah. audio and it's another another entry on the internet that you can use. And that you can upload. There are plenty of places to upload podcasts and things like that. Plus, you can upload it on your own things like social media and so on. So all these different pieces you can put on Facebook. I finally did it. There you yeah, go. You kept talking about it. Yeah. I finally did it. I did it with the QR code on yeah. Google. So. Now, like I said, it, the, the thing is what, what you're really doing with online marketing is you're building an army. Every piece of content is another soldier out in the field. And the, the more of them you have out there, the more territory you can control. You know, so it, it's, it's a cumulative thing. And like I said, because like Hector, we were talking also on the show today about the fact that last month we just wanted to get to our 10,000th download on our, our radio show, and we blew right through 11,000 plus. Yeah. And why did that happen? Well, because we do this show week in and week out, whether we want to or not. In fact, one time Hector was out, what were you, out camping or something, and he had no access to the internet. So I went and grabbed Andy and roped him in, and he was my co-host, and we did great, mm -hmm. you know. But we, we, we produced the show week in and week out. Like, you know, you get a blog from me, week in and week out. Why? Continuity. Okay, those are two things that, that help to get that 800-pound gorilla in the room to like you. Because I guarantee you, if you do this stuff for six months, which is basically what we've done with the radio show, you know, without whining, without complaining, without stopping, then you too will be able to start seeing some amazing results. Because if you look at the first couple of months we were doing the radio show, what the first month we do? 28 people or something like 27, that? 27, I think. We had actually second, 27 downloads. Yeah, second <coughs> second month was like 60 or something like yeah, that. We had like 64 by March. We yeah. started in January. Mm. So we had 64 downloads by March. So you know, like, if you're doing hey. three months into this thing, you're figuring this, this is not doing anything. Yeah. But we just kept at it, and then by July we were doing a couple thousand where we literally in one month we more than blew away the rest of the numbers cumulatively. And the following month we did 3,400, and last month we did about 2,800. Yeah, and that was and the, the month we did 3,400. That was a five-week month. So some months had five weeks, some weeks. This month we should do close to 4,000. That that's what's trending right now. I mean, before we did the first show, we already had 300 downloads oh. in October. I'm like, wow, that's the first time that's ever happened. So. It's all these things are like that. If if you're doing blogs, the short video blogs, you start out, you have one subscriber, two subscribers. But if you're putting out decent material, it, it's cumulative. Consistent. You just have to be consistent. Right. If you put out one every week, people start paying attention to that. It's when you're inconsistent that they go away. If you go up to uh, a Coke machine and put money in it and it gives you a Coke, you're going to come back and get another Coke. But what happens if you put money in and nothing comes out? You're walking. <laughs> <laughs> or you never come back to that machine. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> if, if, if the machine is inconsistent, you probably won't use it. Well, it's the same thing with this. People, the majority of people are looking for consistency. Yeah. If you provide them consistency and good material. Yeah, and Google definitely rewards consistency. Because like I said, they basically look for two things. They look for you know how relevant the topic is to whatever you happen to be. Like if you're if you've got a website and like with us, like say our, our Jacksonville video website, they want to see how relevant your content is to that particular platform, and then they want to see how often you push the content out there. And if you can do those two things, it doesn't take long before you move way up. And I'm telling you that your competition definitely is not putting out weekly blogs, or definitely not putting out daily social posts, or definitely not putting out a lot of blogs. And you're lucky if they have one or two videos tops. So if you keep pushing out content like that that the other guys don't have, sooner or later you got them, and then they can't ever get a vote. I know a guy who was with me and I a couple of years ago, and he was a home inspector. And he was doing a lot of video blogs. I mean, like one a week. And in a very short time, he thought he became an expert at using Google and like that. So he actually left being a home inspector. I'm pretty sure that other job went away too, but he was getting huge amounts of play. Mm -hmm. Within a year of doing this, I mean, because he's consistent, because he was very, very consistent, and he he, he quit being the home inspector. So now I'm a uh, internet, internet guru. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, that didn't play that well either. Uh, so he ended yeah. up going back to being the <laughs> home inspector. But the point is, he was getting really lots and lots of hits. Yeah. 
And what, all he was doing was going in and saying, look, this is what you got to look for. He was just going in and yeah. doing these mm -hmm. little short videos. He'd put the camera like the guy who does out, who goes out in the desert, you know, bring his own yeah. camera, mm -hmm. sit there, and he look at the camera and talk. So, yeah, they don't have to. They don't have to be anything, you know, fantastic or elaborate. People like the ones that aren't so slick. Yeah. That's what you guys have been teaching. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and, and they want a real. Yeah. That's what yeah. they're looking for. Yeah. We're, we're true, true reality TV. You know, that's what you're basically yeah. serving up. Because the, the TV that they see, the reality TV they see on TV, is that real? Yeah, Atlanta Housewives. So yeah. that's all fake it's stuff. Scripted. Right. Okay. So the next article, um, tips for coming up with articles when you're stuck. <laughs> which happens to everybody, at least, like me, once a week or something like that. Um, a simple tool you can use, there's Google tools called, they're trending tools. If you go into Google and say Google tools, there's, there's Google trending tools. And it tells you what's trending, literally. Yeah. I don't care what the subject is, it's going to tell you what's trending on Google. You can look and see what's trending on Facebook. You can look and see what's trending on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so... You can then, if you say, hey, what's trending, then you may be able to write an article that takes advantage of that trending. Mm -hmm. Because if people are searching for that stuff and your title is mixed in with that, they'll look for your stuff. So trending is a very good way of doing things. Um, topics that you're personally interested in, great way of doing that. Um, I always walk around with a little school book that Carl talks about and write notes. I mean, if something happens to me, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a trick. You'll, you'll trip over ideas. Like even what you're talking about, like, all the idea with the, the cat staring back at you. Mm -hmm. That's that's great material for a blog post. Yeah. Mm. And if you had the presence of mind to whip your cell phone out and take a picture of him in the, in the crawl space, it would have been better. Yeah. You know, but you, you teach yourself these things, and after a while, you've got these great tools because you carry this you carry this thing around with you all the time. This is a TV station in your pocket. And I write these down, and what I do is I actually transfer them to my blog. Because yeah. in your blog, there's a place you can put the title, mm -hmm. and then just save the title. Right. Mm -hmm. And if I, I may not have time to write that blog, but I got the title in there, and that's that's the subject of that blog. So if you go on in my blog right now, I like 60 of them that aren't written. But I don't have to go thinking of a subject. They're there. I just have to sit down and write the blog. Okay, now that's the way he does it. All right. I do it differently, okay? <laughs> what, what I do is I use a lot of the news feed. Okay, what I will do is I will go in, to, usually I do just go into Google, you know, and I'll click on the news link, and of course with me I'll click on the technology tab, and it'll give me all the tech articles, but a lot of times if I can't find what I'm looking for, I'll just start throwing other keywords into it because it's got a dialog box. Like one of the things I hit a lot is search engines, because, you know, I'm always looking for what's going on. In fact, that's how I found out that the reason we saw a couple of our, our pages move up or down is because they did another damn uh, update called Panda this time. Last time was Penguin, now the Panda got us. Okay. So, but we'll, we'll stabilize. Because again, because of the fact that we don't do anything black hat, even if we lose a space for a few days, it always comes right back because of the fact that we're content driven and you can't, content's king, you can't beat content. Well, but the point is, is that... main premise is all content. Yeah. But the point is, though, is you can use Google to feed Google. You know, because it'll, it'll come up with some interesting articles, you come up with some interesting ideas, and then you just put your spin on it. And if you write anything about Google, Google likes Google. Yeah. So I don't have to put the word Google in my documents just because I know they like that. Yeah. Um, as far as the next thing I do, follow up articles. You know, if you write an article and you make a very interesting point in the article, that should lead into another article. Yeah. Or if you get an article that's, say, four pages or something like that, a lot of times you can break it down into two or two three, or three different blog posts. And this way you get this way you kind of build people's anticipation. Next week we're going to talk about, you know, and you just lead them right along. Or you can say that this is really, I can't. It's a whole other blog I can write about this one, and then next week write about it. What What is the good size or length for a blog? Well, I'm usually about a page. About a page. Yeah. Yeah, should it be, so shouldn't page. be less than 400 words. Um, Why, most of the tweet then? Well, because most of the search engines and all that kind of stuff they like 400 words. If it's too, you have to be a really good writer to be able to write something under 400 words and have it make sense and be a complete. Yeah, because again, if if you don't, you want to give them a little meat and potatoes with it. You know what I mean? Because the point is, if you make it too brief, they're, they're, you're not going to impress anybody. You know. Yeah, we're not talking about blogs and say, hey, it's a sunny day. I got up. I ate breakfast. Mm -hmm. and that's not what we're talking about. That's a tweet. About. Yeah. yeah. It has to be pretty thought provoking, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the whole point. In fact. 
the whole thing is, and that's why you notice when you when when you folks send us the blogs to um, edit them, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll actually powerize like your your title because the guy have a grabber right up top. If you don't have a grabber right up top, you're, they're not going anywhere. Nobody's going to read it. Then once you have the grabber, then you just have to deliver some of the goods, and then at the end you put your you know you put your backlinks and, and your of course your credits, and always make sure that you give yourself a byline, put your name up there. Because again, what, what a blog is really good at doing is, is establishing you as an authority figure. So you want to give them some authoritative information. So don't short sheet them. Like today's blog, when I wrote it up, it was about three pages. And, and, and sometimes they're less, sometimes they're longer. I mean, I do whatever it takes, but I give them, I give them something really good to chew on. Well, this you know? is something, I give them enough if you write it in, there. in the 400 to 2,000 to 2,400 words, it could also be an article. So you can write it as a blog, Post it to your blog, yeah. and then you can post it to an article Which database. Which both of us do, yeah. And then that, that just gives you another link. I mean, yeah. that's another way of repurposing it. You might tweak it a little bit, give it a little bit different mm -hmm. spin. Mm -hmm. You know, just change some of the wording in there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you just change, just all sorts of slightly. You can change the title. Yeah. Now, some of those programs, like I use uh, eZine, sometimes it'll come up and say, well, this has already been written. I see it's by me. <laughs> okay? So, because some of them want unique content. Um. Well, see, you know, I, 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 I'm a regular contributor to Site Pro News, and uh, they'll ask me whether it's an exclusive article or not. Right. So sometimes I just say it's not exclusive, so I can re, you know, purpose my blog. But if I tell them it is exclusive, that doesn't mean I have to rewrite the entire blog. You just swap a few things around. Like he says, change the lead, change the, you know, the title, and voila. It's, new. it's exclusive. There and you if go. you look at what most writers do, that's exactly what they yeah. do. You just, they re, what they call repurpose the document. Yeah. And like with, with Site Pro News, if you tell them it's exclusive, I have yet where they did not put me on the top of page one. So a lot of times I'll write the exclusive for eZine, yeah. and then I'll rewrite the article for myself. Um, it's not uncommon, though, for other people to pick up your article. If you write a good article and it gets some play, people will pick it up. I mean, I, I do searches on our stuff regularly, and I'll find our articles... I don't know who these people are, and they got the whole article. As long as they got our name and our stuff underneath it, well, I don't care. care. Right. Okay, I mean, but, but they Skype our articles regularly. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, you know, you know the reason why we're getting so much distribution because of the team. Mm -hmm. Because you know, when we when I publish my blog like I did today, I pass it on to you folks, and you do your comment, and then of course you put it out to Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, so we get the distribution, and we do the same for you. So, like I said, you never know who's reading it, and then they if they take it, and then they do the same thing with it. I mean, that's when things go viral, right? Broader. And that's what and, and the more of those puppies you have in there, because remember one thing, this isn't like the TV or the newspaper where you know once the edition is done, it goes in the landfill. These things never die, so you don't never know where. The more of these things you have, the more of a chance the source is going to blunder into it and use it, and that's that's the nature of viral marketing. It's been my experience that when you get up to around two dozen articles, you really start seeing magic happen, okay? And that, so, that shows people that you're not just a one-hit wonder type yeah. of deal. Mm -hmm. So being consistent on a weekly basis would give you 52 in a year, okay? And I don't even have 52, I think I got like 37, 38 yeah. unique articles that I've written, and I still get huge amounts of play on them. My blog has like almost 20,000 views. Okay, and I only started it two years ago. Yeah. And I would bet his got a hell of a lot more doesn't, money. Doesn't take long. <laughs> um, the last item in this one here is listening to others. And this is one of the things, that's why I carry a little notebook around. Yeah. But you could use your cell phone. I mean, most yeah. cell phones let you record into them, whether it's a video or just audio, you know. But I'll be in my B&I meeting and I'll hear people say really stupid stuff. Boy, I start writing that stuff down. <laughs> yeah. Because I write articles about B&I <coughs> stuff, I also write articles about social media and, yeah. and internet stuff, but I'll hear them do a really bad 60 second commercial. And I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, like they'll say something like, you know, like they'll either self-deprecate, which you should never do when you're doing a 60 second commercial, or they'll say something like, you guys ain't ever going to get that. Well, you shouldn't deprecate the audience. Right. Ah. <laughs> yeah, little things like, and some of these things I had, I didn't put them in my book. So I said, oh, I got to add that to the next revision of the book. So I got about six of these things that I got to stick in there. 
But again, listening to others, when you're having a conversation with a client, it's a perfect time because their complaints, every complaint they have is a block. Yeah. Every one. Every success story they've had is a block. 